Hey everyone, uh, so welcome to another Record Producer React, and today I'm looking at, or listening to, I should say, uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid, and of course this is not a first listen, but I thought it'd be useful for me just to go through it and just have a little listen to, you know, think about the things that are going on in it, and and we can talk about them. Hopefully it won't get blocked, uh, like the Ed Sheeran video last week. Um, I totally agree with the label's choice on that, um, but it's nice to be able to have uh, academic discourse uh without uh being blocked for sort of copyright uh reasons um whole other conversation as is this if you can see it so stay tuned for four track fun uh if you know what that is anyway um let's crack on black sabbath paranoid i'm gonna bounce around in it a little bit i think um today just to sort of throw off the algorithms a little bit um so this is the official video for black sabbath Paranoid. I don't think this bit is. This has been added. 1970. So one of the things that I noticed about this is you can hear the room. You can hear the the sound of the room. Um, and you know, all all of the gear is is all a matter of um, a matter of record, I believe. So um, I'm not going to sort of comment on that too much. But you know, like. Uh, there's a sort of it you think about this there's not that much distortion on this on this guitar to begin with and you can definitely hear the sound of the room okay first thing that jumps out of me is this was recorded on tape of course it was recorded on tape the, everything sort of mushes and gels together so if you're after that sound i can wholeheartedly recommend doing a session tracking on tape if or, or if you can't do that, you know, like track to digital and then send it through tape or even, you know, plugins. So the, the kick drum is really interesting as well. There's loads of sub low end in it. And then this click at the top that's like really, it reminds me of a large, um, uh, a large uh, ball bearing about this big. In my mind, that's what goes on when I listen to these these drums. And, and you can also hear like um, that the the snare is quite sort of thick and soft sounding almost there's snap to it but it's not like crystal clear or anything the lots of high, high harmonics have been taken out of that presumably in the recording process um gives a really nice sound i again like i get this sound myself uh, or close to this sound myself by recording on tape right there's sort of some some element of stereo in there, I think. Um, is the guitar doubled, or is that the bass? Don't know, really, actually. Because the, um, <laughs> the the tape delay on the vocal is kind of throwing me a little bit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So chugging, uh, not too many symbols as well. Uh, and, and, and of course, you know, they didn't have the tech to, to gate out all the symbols from all the close mics on the drums, but it still sounds wicked. Just a thought, you know, when you're producing, producing drums for your next record. Yeah, I think it might just be the one guitar and it's sort of off to this side, uh, that side for you. I've never really sat and analysed this before as, as a sort of from a producer's point of view. So I guess there's, there's things we can think about in terms of what they're doing uh, volumes-wise and stuff. So let's have a listen. Let's sort of uh, analyse a little bit of those drums to begin with. Okay, so the hi-hats are kind of quite loud in this mix in comparison to the snare drum. You know, they're almost the same volume as it were, but they certainly don't hold the same punch. Uh, I would imagine, obviously, they, you know, big hi-hats were a thing at the time. Um, so I'm thinking large hi-hats. I'm thinking... Uh, I don't know what the mic setup on this was, actually. I haven't sort of researched it recently and... 
it's probably gone from my mind. Um, but it's just really interesting the way those those top sizzle has been lost, presumably through the tape recording process. You know, a lot of that that high end isn't necessarily captured as um, as effectively on tape um, as it would be digitally. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's a really cool way of, of pulling out some of the harshness of those symbols. So we think about the bass drum. Well, he's playing a bass drum with a front head. Don't know whether it had the front head when it was recorded or not. Doesn't sound like it to me, but it might be. Uh, but, you know, that's very, very nicely matched with the level of the bass. And, and it's just giving that sub. So one of the things in the sort of 60s and 70s that bands were very keen on doing is playing the bass and the kick drum together. And that was sort of a rule for rock and roll. Um... Uh, and it really does. I mean, I still do this with my bands today. I, I make sure that they lock in uh, patterns as much as possible because, you know, it becomes one thing. And certainly when you're tracking to tape or whatever, and you've got um, sort of natural compression of the medium, um, then then you can actually you can actually sort of engineer this so so they become very much more one unit. <laughs> Again, like if there's any stereo on the on the drums, it's not huge amounts. I don't even know if there is. They might just be a mono mix down the middle. Symbols come in. We're not being dragged from left to right. So yeah, we've got like a in one ear, we've got a very harsh kind of rhythmic. Um, fuzz thing going on don't know whether that's the bass or another guitar track and then we've got a solo in sort of panned a bit the other way is it full pa is it lcr panning it could be lcr panning yeah it sounds like It sounds like there's another guitar in one ear going, wah, 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 sort of almost playing um, this kind of one note kind of distortion thing. And then that goes. Now, I know that Iomi has talked about um, this sort of the the rhythmic sound that comes from uh, the sort of atonal rhythmic sound that comes from amplifiers through earth hum, etc. in the past. Interesting concept. <laughs> Again, just chugging, and and I cannot say how much like that the, the sound is gathered from, um, in part, the tech that they were using. Obviously, obviously, the song is the important thing. Obviously, the engineers and producer are super skilled. Obviously, the band are super skilled. But um, you know, it was just uh, th th this this vibe, um, a specific time. Definitely, there is definitely influence from the tech that they're using to record. One of the things that I think is really interesting about um, uh, this particular song is it sort of exemplifies the fact that simple riffs in rock and metal can be uh, timeless and can be you know, heavier than all this sort of technical palm muty, uh, zippy stuff, which, you know, I'm into myself. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Cool, simple rock riff. Totally knocks it out of the park. Totally fills the space in, 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 in the record uh, without having to be too frilly, you know? Okay, did we have, um, did we have a, a Tom hit there? No, I don't think we did. Again, like the the symbols are starting to come through, but like they're nowhere near as uh, as as aggressive as they could be. Which is a nice thing, obviously. Okay, well, I think we're going to leave it there because, you know, copyright and all that. 
ah, that was Black Sabbath Paranoid. Uh, my reaction to it, not a whole lot to say on this one, uh, more than, you know, <laughs> the process. If you want to go for that kind of uh, 1970 um, rock slash dawn of heavy metal um, era thing, then, you know, use the tools that were available at the time, certainly. Um, and, and you're more likely to get that sound. Obviously, you know, I talk about this with the Harrison Mixbus stuff, the whole process of saturation, 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 and 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 even um, re, you know specific EQ curves, the the, the medium, and the desks uh, at the time uh, were, were were implementing um, really does contribute to this sound. And actually, you know, like I believe this record, the entire album was mixed super quick. Um, so, like uh, recorded in a day or something, and mixed in a day. Um, if I'm right, if my memory recalls properly. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, just, you know, if you want to make a record like this, go for it and just try and keep things th simple. Don't gate everything. Don't compress everything beyond, you know, nice tape compression. Uh, give yourself a limited number of tools to do this and you'll get closer to the sound that you've been searching for, perhaps. Let me know what you want me to review next. Um, in the comments below. If I was totally wrong and you know loads about Black Sabbath's recording process, let me know because I would love to learn more. If I was right, let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all that jazz. You know the score. Like and subscribe and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.